Hello everybody and welcome to the Pet Portraits by Drew channel. I am Drew and today I will be talking you through how I painted this gorgeous little pug on wood. So obviously I've done all my prep work, I've gessoed it, I've sketched out the portrait etc. If you'd like to see that process I can definitely make a video for that, just let me know. But here I am starting with the paint, just laying down some really basic colours with a large brush. I've chosen to do it with a larger brush because I really don't want to focus on any of those details. I just want to get that tone and colour down. So I have generally mapped out his folds, but I'm definitely not going to go too overboard with it because I will define those later on. And I've also done a nice brown wash for the muzzle, even though I do go over it with shades of grey in just a second. <laughs> there we go. Um, it is nice to have that warmth peeping through, it gives a lot of dimension to the portrait. So once I've got those base colours down, you can see here the general gist of the portrait. We've got a really good base to work from there and I like to pretty much always start with the eyes. Partially because it's my favourite part but also because I do think that it's the most important part. If you can get the eyes right, the rest of the portrait tends to follow. So you can also see that I've switched out to a much smaller brush. I'm happy to start working those details in now. There's not going to be any gaps in the painting because of those base colours. You can also see in some areas that I don't over render it. Sometimes if I really like the, the organic strokes of the underpainting, I'll try and work with that rather than painting over it. So there is some parts of the portrait where that underpainting peeps through a little bit. And in this portrait, I would say you'll notice that quite a bit in the eyes and also in the muzzle, especially in the muzzle. As you can see as well, I'm also doing lots of hair strokes for the fur. I usually take a slightly lighter or a slightly darker shade then the base colour to create that fur effect. Lots and lots of little lines to create that texture. I do try and slightly change the angle and the length of each stroke while still following sort of the general direction. And that just gives it a more organic and natural feeling. But also do keep in mind that fur direction is hugely important to give that realistic look to the portrait. So we are talking very slight changes to the angle and the length. So like I mentioned previously, I don't do a lot with the muzzle in this portrait. I just add a few little details to stay true to the reference, but I did really like how the underpainting looked all painterly and I wanted to lean into that rather than covering it up. I don't know if it's just my personal style, but I think having some areas with a little bit of a more painterly vibe doesn't detract from the realism and it actually keeps it looking like a painting too if that makes sense. Basically I still like the portrait to look like a painting just as much as I want it to look like the reference photo. So um, you'll see in a minute the portrait all finished. Lots of angles of the, of the portrait there because I'm extra fancy. Um, but please do let me know what you thought of the painting and this video. I have a microphone now so I would love to do more stuff like this. Is there um, a particular topic or a tutorial that you'd like to see in this video format? If there is, please let me know. Other than that, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day and hopefully I'll see you in a future video. But for now, enjoy these beauty shots and goodbye.